In the history of warfare, there have been hundreds and hundreds of weapons created with the sole purpose to kill the enemy. And in that history, there are many that stand heads and shoulders above the rest, being renowned and recognizable years later. Today's video is about one such weapon, once referred to by General George S. Patton in World War II as the greatest battle implement ever devised, and highly, highly regarded by every soldier that carried it onto the battlefield. That weapon is, of course, the M1 Garand, which we are going to refer to as the M1 throughout the rest of the video. Let's delve into this weapon, from its inception to its combat usage and its lasting legacy in modern days. The history of the M1 Garand started far before the Second World War, where it originally was heavily used and garnered its reputation. It started with the Army's interest in semi-automatic rifles at the turn of the century. At this time, the primary standard-issue rifle of armies around the world were bolt-action rifles, such as the Springfield or the famous Mauser 98. These rifles had the obvious drawback of a slow fire rate and small reserve ammo store. Our story with the M1 starts when designer John C. Garand was hired at the Springfield Armory in 1919. He was a chief civilian engineer and immediately began work on a new semi-automatic rifle design. His first design was the M1922, which did not compete as well against other designs and rev was revised into the M1924. This was chambered in 30 caliber, and Garand also designed a gas-operated model that was chambered in .276. Out of these two models, the latter was more favorable, and the original M1924 was dropped. The rifle was put up in competition with the T1 Peterson, which it outperformed. .276 caliber Garand was recommended for production in 1932. Garand, however, was still testing his 30 caliber model, and soon after the recommendation for the .276, he successfully retested it, and the Secretary of War and Army Chief of Staff, General Douglas MacArthur, ordered that the 30 caliber version be the main focus instead of the .276. In 1933, it was designated as the semi-automatic rifle caliber 30 M1 and would be standardized by January 9th, 1936, with production cleared for July 21st, 1937. As mentioned earlier, the M1 is chambered in .306 or 30 caliber with a very unique eight round block clip design that is inserted into the top of the gun. This is one of the most iconic features of the gun, with the sound of an empty clip ejecting, almost creating its own legend in popular culture. With a muzzle velocity of around 2800 FPS and an effective range up to 500 yards, it is clear why it was beloved. It weighs around 10 pounds and is gas operated with a fire rate of 16 to 24 rounds per minute, of course depending on how quick the user could reload. Incredibly, around 5.4 million M1s were built over its lifetime, making it one of the most produced rifles ever. Now really quick, I want to analyze a couple things that tend to be misunderstood about the M1. For starters, many people are familiar with the gun due to video games, where it appears from Call of Duty to Battlefield and numerous others. Chances are, if you've played a video game, you've used this weapon. One misconception these games tend to give off is that these weapons are highly customizable, or were customized during the war. This is not true. They were called standard issue for a reason. They are the standard base rifles. There were, however, some attachments that could be used with this rifle, such as a bayonet, which was common, or the M7 grenade launcher barrel attachment. Alongside this, there are some stories of soldiers customizing their own weapons with features such as an adjustment to allow it to fire in full auto. Another thing that is still oddly thought to be true it's tough is that the gun could not like be this. reloaded until we all eight shots sure were snipers are placed. This is also we false, it as it is possible to load both single Easy. cartridges into a partially expended clip, or eject a partially expended clip. The M1 was first used in combat in the Second World War, where it built up its legendary reputation. Now during the Second World War, the vast majority of armies and countries outfitted their soldiers with bolt-action rifles as standard issue. Rifles like the Enfield or the Mauser 1895 or the Arasaka. 
Most of these bolt-action rifles had a standard 5 rounds before needing to be reloaded, with a fire rate that paled in comparison to the M1. This gave the United States Army a huge advantage once it entered the war, as its soldiers were outfitted with the best rifle on the battlefield. While many other armies did have semi-automatic rifles, none were standard issue for infantry. With the M1 as the driving force, the American forces helped push through Stronghold Europe and through the island hopping campaign in the Pacific. During the early 1950s and the Korean War, the United States Army was still using the M1 as its standard rifle. Production was still happening until the late 1950s when it ceased. It served the US forces well in the Korean War, and throughout the 50s and even later, surplus M1s were provided to US allies like South Korea, West Germany, Italy, Japan, and more. By the onset of the Vietnam War in 1963, there were still some M1s that saw service, However, by now the next generation had arrived with the M14's adoption in 1958, being a very similar gun with many, many improvements. The M1 was now gasping its last breath, but would remain in service with the National Guard, Army Reserve, and Navy until the early 1970s. Although the rifle still exists in many forms and uses today, its time in the spotlight as one of the greatest rifles on the battlefield was over. Although the rifle has been out of service for essentially over 50 years, it has garnered a huge legacy and a devout following among the civilian population. As I mentioned earlier, the rise in gaming has been one of the larger proponents of this, as now the rifle was exposed not just to history buffs, but also to millions of gamers who got their hands on it. The Civilian Marksmanship Program is a program that allows citizens who meet certain qualifications to purchase surplus M1 rifles, of which there are plenty. These rifles are hugely popular among collectors and even just civilians alike, as its popularity is so widespread. Alongside this, it is still often used for ceremonial purposes in the military today. Though the rifles are aging and many many more have come since, this unique and reliable rifle still stands tall and proud in American military history. Hey y'all, Cameron just wanted to pop in here at the end and just say thank you for watching the video. Um, if you enjoyed it, leave it a like, uh, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Should have a couple other cool videos coming out in the near future that I am working on. And uh, yeah, that's all I got. Hope you have a good day. As always, I'll see you on the flip side.